So now we're going to find the expected value of p squared. So I'm going to start off with the wave function, and then I'm going to define all these symbols here, just to save myself a bit of time. And then under all these symbols, you can see that our wave function can be rewritten as k times e to the power of negative lx squared. So I'm just applying these two constants over here. So this is going to save myself a, a lot of time later on when, I, when I'm going to have to manipulate this wave function. So starting off with uh, the expected value of p squared, which is what we're trying to find, we're just going to apply the, into, uh, the definition. So which is equal to the integral of the conjugate multiplied by the momentum operator squared applied to the wave function. And then I can pull these constants out. So I have the conjugate multiplied by the second derivative of the wave function. So now, in order to find this integral, we need to first find the second derivative of the wave function. So the wave function we call it is equal to k times e to the power of negative lx squared. So the first derivative is just equal to this expression here. I'm just applying the chain rule. So I just differentiate the exponent outside. And then I take the second derivative. So these constants, they stay behind. And then, so there should be an x over here. So uh, I differentiate the x, and then I retain this term. And then I retain the x, and then I differentiate this term. So I can put this negative sign on the inside. And so let's try to clean this up a bit. So we have a 2lx squared minus 1 times e to the power of negative lx squared. So there you have it. This is the second derivative. And now we need to apply this with the conjugate of the wave function. So the conjugate of the wave function is just equal to the conjugate of k times e to the power of negative conjugate of lx squared. So we call that both k and l are actually uh, complex numbers. So when I take the conjugate of the wave function, I need to take the con conjugate of both of these terms. So now let's just substitute this expression into this term over here. So our goal now is to find the conjugate of the wave function multiplied by the second derivative. So we have the conjugate, which is equal to this term over here multiplied by the second derivative. So 2lk, 2lx squared minus 1 times e to the power of negative lx squared. So I can group some of these terms together. You can see that k, they combine together to give you this term. And then you have 2lx squared minus 1. And then here we have l plus l conjugate x squared. So we can simplify this exponent here by considering the definition of L. So L is equal to A divided by 1 plus yi. So L is equal to A divided by 1 plus yi. So when I take the conjugate of L plus L, that's, that's just equal to A divided by 1 minus yi plus A divided by 1 plus yi. And then I'm going to multiply the numerator and denominator by 1 plus yi, so the denominator becomes 1 plus y squared. And then for this term, I'll multiply the numerator and denominator by 1 minus yi. And the denominator also becomes 1 plus y squared. So you can see I can add these both together, and these two terms, they cancel out. So in the end, it becomes 2a divided by 1 plus y squared. And incidentally, recall that our w is equal to the square root of a divided by 1 plus y squared. So this term here just becomes 2w squared. So if you recall, 2w squared has actually uh, been featured in one of our previous videos. So I can just replace all this with a 2w squared. And so there we have it. So now all I need to do to find the expected value of p squared is to multiply this constant by this integral. And since we've already found this entire term, we can now try to integrate it. So we're going to try to integrate this. So if you integrate this term over here. You can see that we, we essentially have two integrals. So I'll keep these constants outside. So first we have an integral that is equal to 2L times x squared times e to the power of negative 2W squared x squared dx. And then we also have an integral that looks something like this. 
And then uh, these are actually integrals that we've encountered many times before. So we've actually encountered these integrals in the previous video. So we call that if you have an integral that looks something like this, the result is equal to the square root of pi divided by 2 divided by k times the square root of k. And then if you have an integral that looks something like this, this is equal to the square root of pi divided by k. So I've covered these two results in the previous video, so you can look back to that video if you're interested in why this is the case. But now I'm going to apply these two results to this integral over here. So you can see that this integral over here is equal to 2L times the absolute value of k squared. And then here we have 2L. And then I'm going to apply this uh, formula over here because you can see that this integral is essentially uh, this integral where k is equal to 2w squared. So all I have to do is substitute 2w squared into the k. So 2 times 2w squared, square root of 2w squared. And then for this term over here, we do the same thing. You can see that these two integrals are basically the same integral in the same form. So we have minus the square root of pi divided by 2w squared. So essentially, we're, we're actually done here. This is the answer. We, all, we just need to multiply this by the square root of, uh, by negative h bar squared to get our answer. But we can do a lot more by simplifying this expression a bit. So uh, I can apply the definition of k here to simplify this. So we call that k is equal to k is equal to 2a divided by pi 1 fourth multiplied by 1 divided by the square root of 1 plus i y. So the absolute value of k squared, that's just equal to the square root of 2a divided by pi divided by the square root of 1 plus y squared. So, so this should be a y not theta. So all we're doing when we're taking the square is that we're taking the conjugate and the denominator and the multiplying it together. So that just becomes 1 plus y squared. So I can just substitute this result right here. 1 plus y squared. And then for this term, we can simplify a bit. The 2's, they cancel out. So we get L divided by 2w squared. And then we also have a square root of pi divided by a square root of 2w squared. And then we can actually just take out the square root of pi divided by 2w squared. And then here you can see that the square root of pi, they cancel out. The square root of 2, they cancel out. And then we can see that we have a square root of a divided by 1 plus y squared. So I'm just combining this with this. Uh, these terms I'll keep for now. And then here we have a square root of w squared. So that's just equal to 1 over w. And then this, by definition, is actually equal to w. So we have a w divided by w. So both of these, they actually cancel out. So we have a much simpler term. So let me just put the 2 on the inside. And so we get something like this, minus 2. So now let's try to continue with for, uh, sim further simplifying this. So w is equal to the square root of a divided by 1 plus y squared. So w squared is just equal to a divided by 1 plus y squared. And if you're dividing this, we get 1 plus y squared divided by a minus 2. And so uh, in order to further simplify this, I'm also going to substitute in the uh, definition of L. So L is just equal to a divided by 1 plus yi. So this is equal to a divided by 1 plus yi. So 1 plus y squared divided by a minus 2. So these a's, they conveniently cancel out. And then, so let's just copy this out first. So we have a 1 plus y squared divided by a 1 plus yi minus 2. And then 1 plus y squared, this is, can actually be factorized into 1 plus yi, 1 minus yi. And so if you apply this factorization, you can see that one of the terms, they actually just cancel out with the denominator. So this just cancels out. So in the end, we have 1 minus yi minus 2. So we have negative 1 minus yi. So negative 1 plus yi times L. And then L, as we've seen uh, multiple times, is just equal to A divided by 1 plus yi. 
And so you see that this 1 plus yi, they both cancel out, so we get negative a. So this is the result of, inter uh, of our integral. And so what this means is that this entire integral over here, this entire integral is just equal to negative a. So the square, uh, so the expected value of momentum squared is just equal to the negative of h bar squared times negative a, which is equal to a h bar squared. So this is your answer.